Good almost afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a it is actually a very beautiful day. It is. In downtown San Antonio. As you can see here behind us, uh, Christina will tell us what's behind us here in just a little bit. But this is Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm, Integrity Roofing and Siding, and the Sabinal Group. And we are live once again inside the all-electric Lexus RZ450E, courtesy of North Park Lexus of San Antonio and North Park Lexus at Dominion. And this is Christina Olivares, who she has so many titles, I needed two lines <laughs> on my notes here. I needed two lines. Oh a visibility gosh. and business executive coach. You're a strategist. You're the host. Is it Hustle and Socialize? Hustle and Socialize. Your conference. Yes. You're a social media expert, uh, a personality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just I only had one sheet. I, I couldn't put sheet. it all. I oh couldn't put it all on one sheet. It's so good to see you. <laughs> it's so great to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Um, let's just start with what's behind us. You were just saying this is 300 main this behind us in the, in the camera, right in up the here. In the camera. This is a new um, living space. Yes. Apartment space by Western Urban. They, yes. They're about to, I think it's open, okay. I'm not sure. And okay. then we're here at Geekdom. So we're literally, I always like to say, I find shade. And, yeah. and the building that's casting a shadow on us today is mm -hmm. Geekdom, or the, Geekdom. The, Rand the Rand building, building. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you office out of here. I office out of here, yes, this I do. This is where, where the, 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 um, the social butterfly gal empire mm -hmm. exists. It does, yes. I float around. I actually don't have a physical office. I am a commuter member, and so I get the luxury of commuting okay. between floors and then coffee shops. Literally like a butterfly. Yeah. Use. So let's start with that then yeah. because the, the name is something that has been with you for a while. Mm -hmm. What was it about the butterfly that inspired you to put it on your company? Yeah, I was always often known as the social butterfly. When you were little. Up when I was little. Yeah. I was very social and very um, just energetic. And when I was trying to figure out what, it was a blog. So first social butterfly back gal was a, back in the okay. day, it was a blog and that was my title. And of course it was taken. So I had to find something to add and I was in my twenties. So I didn't feel like I was a girl. And so I was like, no. well, let's Texan it up. Yes. Right. So gal is so Texan yeah, it is. that I put True. it in the name. And that was my first LLC before I shifted my, oh my LLC name to Chris. Christina SVG to kind of hyphenate it and make me a little bit more mature. Yeah, and so point. you were forming LLCs and I mean... Yeah, I was 24. Uh, you were young. I was young. You're still young, by I'm the still way. still young. Clear. <laughs> yeah, it was I, like 10 years ago. I, I got multiple years on you, girl. <laughs> um, but nonetheless... Um, yeah. And this is a first, by the way. I've never had a bird perch on top of <gasps> oh a car. God. I'm sorry. Squirrel. <laughs> um, I've, never had a, I've never had a live bird perch. <laughs> A visitor. Can I help you? It's no, no, we're good. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, oh goodness gracious. Trying to butt in our conversation. <laughs> um, so, so I, I was reading, uh, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, you went to Veterans Memorial High School. And immediately I, I thought, oh, she's a local girl. And then I was no. like, wait, no. No. Not not the Veterans Memorial High School here in San Antonio. No, and I didn't even know that, well, that there was one. It's relatively, it's it hasn't been around forever, but, mm -hmm. but you grew up in, I guess, the Valley, right? I did. I was born and raised down in Mission, Texas, was there all my life, and my parents were really active in our school board. My dad was president. Um, he announced our football games. So, my, like, my kind of guy. Yeah, so he was our football announcer. I got to hang out in the press box. Like radio or well, no, public address announcing? Public address announcing. Yes. So he was the voice of our <sighs> football team, and Love that. I hung out in the press box almost every Friday night, and some of the reporters that are actually working for San Antonio Express got their start with the monitor, the newspaper down there. And so there's a couple of reporters that I know that they said, I watched you grow up in the press box. <laughs> So, yeah, I, w I was there, and then I went to Texas State University in 2009. Uh, I, I just, those great, I grew up in those kinds of press boxes, mm. covering sports in my early careers, mm -hmm. when you get little finger sandwiches and yeah. bags of chips and day-old brownies or whatever, yeah. and a can of so soft drink or whatever, but I yeah. thought it was amazing. It's like it was so free fun. food, and you're, you're, you're get a free ticket into the game, yeah. and you're sitting, in, usually, um, if not AC, you were mm -hmm. undercover, so you're in the press box, yeah. and uh, you just couldn't cheer. That was a thing. Right, and you know, he had the mic. My dad had the microphone, and I think that's where my love of communication and having yes. the mic came from, because I got to see him, you know, his, his saying was, first down, Rick Brown, first down, because that was a sponsor. The sponsor, of course. So I got to, I got to hear that and got to see 
and I would sometimes pick the microphone and go, you know, go Patriots whenever I, I love could. It. Yeah. I love it. So yeah, so you got you got introduced to the microphone mm -hmm. early on. Yeah. Um, but at what age did you realize? Um, like I remember very distinctively, I was mm -hmm. ten when I started public address announcing, and I fell in love with it. Yeah. How old were you when you realized with the microphone and mm. talking and your energy and your personality that you could do something with it? I would say second grade, so maybe about. Oh so when I was in school, I just remember uh, our table, our, our desk. Yes. I remember always shuffling the papers like an okay. anchor, and I would do that, and then I would yes. do I would do this, and I think oh. it was at that moment where I recognized like, oh, I really love uh, this thing called broadcasting. And I think at that moment, and I was always a performer, so I would, I was in our drama club yes. and just performing, and I think that that was the very first time that I re recognized there's such a passion for being on stage and just performing. So what productions were you in? I was in Annie, Wizard of Oz. Please tell me you were Annie. I wasn't. I was one of the orphans. <laughs> I was a hard, orphan life. number two or something. Uh, Wizard of Oz, Dracula, Fifth wow. on the Roof. Wow, okay. Yeah, we did a lot. Okay. We, we went to state a couple of times actually here. Good for you. Yeah, so it was, it was so much fun. So at that time though, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, broadcasting, you, you know, caught mm -hmm. your eye, but you were looking at what, like entertainment broadcasting or red carpet type, very, type stuff? Very, very. I wanted to be an entertainment reporter for E! That was my thing. I watched a lot of E! growing up. I watched a lot of MTV. So back then they called DJs. <laughs> sure, right? yeah, um, exactly. Instead of DJs. Instead right. of DJs. Right. And so it was really that love of entertainment reporting that I really love. And I had a passion for television. So television sitcoms, television dramas. Oh I was really I'm, big. I'm liking that. you more and more by the minute here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so obviously we have an age difference, but let's mm -hmm. go there. Then uh, Late 80s, 90s yes, sitcoms. Cheers. Cheers, Family Ties. I mean, oh, th around the '90s on Nick at Night, those were the shows that I got introduced to. I got introduced to like Brady Bunch, Three's Company, oh. All in the Family. Right? Um, Are you the sure we're not related? <laughs> Are you sure? So it was such a love for television and just the craft too of writing and television writing and and what a person's imagination um, right. could do for you know just entertainment. 98% of the audience is probably going to think this is corny and cheesy, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I am guilty. Sometimes in the car, yeah. I listen to TV theme songs. Oh, my God. For, and I, ha I have playlists yeah. and everything. Whatever. Yeah. You have your Taylor Swift playlist or whatever. <laughs> I do, because... And, and I was watching a show the other day, and mm -hmm. they don't... Obviously... They would never give airtime to a 60 second or a 90 second theme song. Yeah. But some of my favorite memories are singing those darn songs oh and watching the credits roll at the yeah. beginning of a show. The Wonder Years theme song still uh. hits me to this day. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it was such a love for, for television and studies and pop culture, which was my minor at Texas State. Of course it was. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, okay, so then you, you graduate, you went to Texas State, you have the TV news bug, entertainment mm -hmm. correspondent, and then it comes time, as most of us have been there, to get out in the real world and find... A job. Yes. Yeah, so I actually interned back then. It was called WOAI. It's now News 4 and Fox 29. I've, heard, I've heard of you've them. You've heard of them. I've heard of them. Yeah, so it sounds I, familiar. <laughs> I interned in uh, at that TV station and then KSAT. When it was downtown. Penance. When it was downtown. Yeah. Was downtown. So this, this whole entire area I was very familiar yeah. with. I actually interned for a year at WOAI before there was that hiring freeze when, when the stations merge. So yeah. I came yes. into the business. Monica right. Nino was the executive producer Love of her. SA uh, Living. San Antonio Living. San Antonio right, Living right, right. with right. Shelly Miles. And um, Shelly's still there Shelley's doing her still thing, there. by the way. And so, you know, I, I was that intern that was like, I want whatever you could give me, let's go. Let's create a reel. And then I got out into the real world and uh, it was so hard. And a lot of the news directors would always tell me, you need to cut your hair. You need to look a certain way. You have to speak a certain way. Um, and it was very hard for somebody who just doesn't, you know, didn't know what they were doing. I mean, I, I had literally everything on paper of internships, connections. And so after maybe a couple of, and, and it was one thing where I would get typecast. It was like, well, you're Latina, so go to Telemundo or Univision. See, this, is where I, this is where I start getting angry now. This yeah. Is where I get, so yeah. let, let's, let's, let's 
dive a little deeper here yeah. because Lord knows I've been there I as can well. Imagine, I can but, imagine. But yeah. But I've always said on record, no mm-hmm. question about it, the, the women in broadcasting have it. I don't know if worse is the word, but mm-hmm. it's certainly different than what the men, if right. you will, have. Right. So okay, what, what are some of those conversations? You said they're asking you to cut your hair. So your, was your hair about that My long? hair, yes. It's been the same. I've okay. never cut my hair. Um, it was very changing my look. And I'm very tiny. Yes, I'm, you are. I'm very, you know, I, I look very young. And so it was like, you need to mature yourself. And it was like, wear pants, cut your hair, um, speak a certain way, right? I had a little bit of a valley accent. I had that Puro 956 accent. So it was like, change your inflections, right? Uh. And it was so disheartening and a lot. So when I was trying to get on air, the one way that they would tell me to get your foot in the door would be to do producing. And so I would um, interview for some overnight positions of producing. And that was at that moment where I recognized, like, how bad do I actually want this? (laughs) So how many rounds of rejection would you say you got before you finally decided to pivot and do something else? The final rejection was Essay Life. So I went into the second or third round. I actually interviewed with Fiona at KSAT. At KSAT. Okay. And I actually, at that rejection, I recognized, hey, I think that maybe the door is closed, but maybe there's a window that I could open. And around that time, that was 2013, because they did, uh, well, 2014, because they did SA Live uh, right. around that time. And that's when I recognized I need to start a blog and I need to start pivoting into public relations. And so I started the Social Butterfly Gal blog at the time, and I thought, you know what, let me document my experiences as a public relations um, admin assistant so that maybe they would want to hire me because they could see my dedication to the craft and the dedication to that. And then I started to develop my personal brand. And that's when Social Butterfly Gal took off. 2015, 2015. right? You're, so next year will be 10 next years. Next year will be 10 years. Actually, thank you. The 10-year anniversary of the brand was actually in August of 2014. So I'm I'm celebrating like a whole decade, but I didn't turn it into an LLC until 2015, oh which gosh. then pivoted to a, a social media management company. Yes, which yeah. I want to get to in just a second. But mm-hmm. how difficult was it when you finally had to see big picture and and let go of the TV thing, if you will. It was so difficult. I think that all my life I was like dead set on Good Morning America, but what I didn't recognize was I was actually opening more doors to different possibilities of actually getting featured on television shows because that's actually what has happened in my life. Like, even though I'm not a reporter, I've been featured on KSAT. I've been featured on Fox. I've been featured on Ken's. And that I think was something that I had to shift thinking of like, how could I maybe still have these opportunities in a different way? Are you a spiritual person? I'm very, yeah. So how, I mean, how much did that play into like, Lord, just, you know, it's in your hands kind of stuff. It played heavily. I think at that time and to this day too, I have no, I've seen like, oh, this is why that didn't door, that door didn't open. Isn't it crazy how that happens? (laughs) It really is. It really, really is. And in fact, my favorite moment was, um, two years after I started my company, SA Live, one of the producers ended up hiring me to do social media training for her team. Yeah. And so it was kind of like such a full circle moment because I was like, oh, I actually interviewed for, with you and for you. And now here you're giving me the opportunity to do something entirely different with your team that's actually going to benefit your show. And that you're very good at. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah. No, no, I mean, well, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's just crazy how that happens. It is. And, and it really is. I think you even had a quote or something. You said, like, these roadblocks, you said, uh, these roadblocks have been some of the biggest blessings in my life. Yeah. They have. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it is. is. And it's still. You can't make it up. You, you can't, can't make, make it, up. it up. And it's still, it's <clears> still to this day unfolding. Oh, kind of like, excuse me, <clears throat> kind of like social media is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I almost fell out of my chair when I was reading you, you date your, your social media history back to AOL, like was it instant messenger instant and messenger. They had these things called home pages and, yes. and messaging, uh, group messaging. And yes. I mean, the little yellow guy logo running and he would you say, got you mail. got mail. <laughs> yeah. That was my first time. And kudos to my parents for allowing me to have my own phone line. So I wouldn't. That was clog so- their phone line up so that I could be on the internet. Well, <laughs> now how crazy is that? Because yeah. that, 
for young people watching is that was probably an exception. It was. That was a rarity back then. Very, very. Own so. phone line. Own phone line. Costs money. It does. Yeah. Well, I'm an only child too, so I think it was kind of like whatever. <laughs> it's okay. Whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Well, it worked out. Little yeah. did they know they were investing in your future career exactly. and everything. Exactly. All right. All right. <laughs> we continue on here with Christina Olivares and, and social media. I mean, I could we could do another hour just on social media, mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping I can tap into you for some free advice or free free counseling here for a few minutes <laughs> because, um, I mean, how do you even begin to explain social media, the algorithms, um, the, the secret sauce to mm -hmm. making it work? Uh, it's so complex, but in 2024, as we sit here on the verge of your, or the 10th anniversary of your company, mm -hmm. what do you make of social media right now? My goodness, how much it has changed our yeah. society, the fabric of our <clears throat> society. Um, back then, people were still trying to figure out what Facebook was and what Instagram was. Right. And now it's this whole beast, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's now changed. And I, I said that in 2020 in my TED talk where it was right. like, we recognize that it's no longer optional. It's a necessity. And it it's so vital to how we market, how we connect and how we do business as a whole. I've had conversations just in my, in this capacity with mm -hmm. the show and everything uh, of, of the same thing. It, it's like trying to convince people, well, we don't have money for it. We can't, we can't spend money. We're not, we're not going to do that. And right. you try to, you try to explain to them, like, I, I get it. Not everybody mm -hmm. has a million dollar marketing budget, but, yeah. but how critical it is to invest in, in your own business or your nonprofit or wh whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, of course I'm biased and I want everybody to come on my show, but, yeah. but can you speak to that? Just how important it is to, to utilize social media in some way, shape or form? Yeah. You know, I think it's best described when I had the honor of managing social media for Fiesta San Antonio. That was probably one wow. of the greatest. When was that? 2018 through 2021. So I managed it I for four years. Okay. I was their whole entire team of one with uh, contractors that would come in to help oh, me manage the the events. So somebody would take over the uh, account for Oyster Bake. Yes. Or, but I think it was so noticeable at how important that was because that was actually in the middle of the pandemic. And, you it know, does. all these nonprofits um, had to close their operations or they were on the verge of right. closing and we really tapped into social media to help phase raise funds yeah. for these nonprofits to bring some connectivity to all of our community and yeah. just bring some joy because that's what Fiesta is. And I think at that moment we recognize like, Oh, it is, you can't just treat it as we're going to show up every two months for this event and then right. buy like these nonprofits really depend on um, the community and that's where you use social media to get right in front of them with a the touch of a button. Fiesta is easily the largest income generator for many of those nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when yeah. they, when it was taken away in 2020 or even when you had that, was it that June Fiesta yeah. in 21? Yeah. That's when I, that's Ugh. when I left the contract. I'm yeah. Still <laughs> cooling down from that. that yeah. That's, that's a, uh, that, that's unbelievable. But mm -hmm. I think some people have a hard time sometimes trying to explain or realize the value and right. that, that I tell people, yeah, sure. You can go buy a billboard or mm -hmm. via bus or you get by some airtime on a TV station, yeah. but that is super expensive. Right. And you're getting, it's, you're right in front of your ideal client right. with, you know, some, obviously you have to do some ads, but some it's all organically. And you yeah. don't have to spend, all you have to really do is spend your time and understanding the algorithms and understanding your audience. And, and that's really, truly like what social media has become. One thing I have found in my post news career, just mm -hmm. in the last year or so that I really wish I would have done sooner is mm -hmm. the power of LinkedIn. Yes. And I tell people, oh if you take anything away from this, yeah. uh, get a LinkedIn or activate your LinkedIn account. Yeah. I have, I've had so many speaking opportunities, yes. sponsorship opportunities, um, just partners that I never yeah. thought. Yeah. LinkedIn's incredible. So if you were to rank in terms of, uh, you know, effectiveness, viability, mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, the big ones, Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter slash X, Instagram, mm -hmm. TikTok. What if, let's just say a nonprofit says, all right, fine, we're, we're going to pick one or two. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to put our money. How do you, how do you decide? Or is it different it's, depending on the client? It's different depending on the client yeah. because we want to know exactly what their overall goal is yeah. and what where their audience is on. And 
quite frankly, audiences are now on almost every single platform. I don't want you to discount like TikTok or Facebook. Right. Like, obviously, it depends on your client that is going to bring you like mm-hmm. the most money. That is your ideal client, but you really have to look at okay, what is your overall goal? What do you want to accomplish with social media? Yeah. Is it connectivity? Is it actually raising money, getting clients? And so it really depends. A lot of, of well, when I used to manage, because I don't manage anymore, right. but when I used to manage, it would just be the top three, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Some of them had LinkedIn. And so it's really dependent on what your goals are. And there's so many more, you know, we don't they know. Are. Like there's TikTok, threads. Well, there's <laughs> threads, but like TikTok, we don't know what's going to happen ultimately with that. And mm-hmm. Snapchat is still around. And yeah. then it feels like there's others that are, yeah. that are coming up and everything. But mm-hmm. is Facebook still like here to stay you I, think and... yeah i feel it's here to stay okay. yeah i feel it's here to stay just like instagram i mean it's meta so no matter what at the end That's of true. the day you know it's there i do feel though that uh, uh, different generations are definitely on different platforms yes. so that is uh, an important thing to remember it's like well if you're really wanting to reach a specific demographic then you have to understand but don't the thing is, though, is like you might want to reach younger demographics, but you're right. actually trying to reach the parents because they have the money right now, right? That They're, is true. Right. So it's like understanding where to where very to good, put it. Very good. Very yeah. good. Let me ask you this mm-hmm. because we, there's so many uh, conversations uh, are brought up about likes and impressions mm-hmm. and reach and 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 going viral, those kinds yeah. of things. Um, you know, if it were so easy, everybody would have 500 million friends and followers. Yeah. But how, how do you explain somebody who, let's just say, is a public figure or mm-hmm. somebody... You, I'm just going to use you for an example since mm-hmm. you're sitting here. You're a likable person, right? You've been around for a while doing mm-hmm. this. Um, but, you know, you have however many followers you have. Yeah. How do you, how do you get those people who say, yeah, we love you. We love what you do. You're great. You're a nice yeah. person. But how do you get them to ultimately click follow or to commit to you on social media? It's really all about if they truly believe in my mission and vision. And there are some people who are lurkers, right? I think we all have the lurkers. They will watch you from afar. Right. Um, Some people will actually turn into a follower or they'll like your content. I know there's a lot of people who watch my content. They don't like it. They just like watch from afar. I honestly, they keep tabs. Yeah. I honestly don't (laughs) pay attention to that. I'm not a person that's like stressing on followers or stressing on um, amount of likes. I am all about how many people am I really impacting and what does that impact look like from not just a, a money standpoint, but actual action standpoint to where maybe it changes the course of the trajectory of generations to come. And that impact is really hard to measure. That doesn't, yeah, that doesn't go through a follow or a like. And I, uh, hearing, you know, what, Instagram, the head of Instagram, where they're putting their focus on, they're not focusing on reach. They're not focusing on likes. They're really focusing on connectivity and what that looks like. And so I think for me, I'm, I'm more focused on if like, for an example, if a woman um, has gone through the conference and makes a decision to leave her corporate job and starts a business, that's an impact right there. Which is yeah. again, it's not easily it's measured. Not easily measured, but it's yeah. it is an impact. It is an impact, and you yeah. have to follow. I mean, you literally read up on the different platforms, mm-hmm. and you follow them on the news and everything, mm-hmm. and just in the interest of keeping tabs on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you you talk about your journey, and you say unapologetic visibility. Yes. Which means, what does that mean to you? It means that I'm able to show up in my fullness at all times, which is something I felt that I was pushing against in the, when I was trying to find a job in the news business, right. um, any, t- any networking event that I go to any place that I show up, I show up as me, as myself at all times. You so you don't have to turn it on. I don't have to turn it on. When you show up. This or... is literally me. Like if you were <laughs> to get me at 5 a.m. Cause I wake up at five to work out. This is literally who I am. Okay. And I show up as me and I feel like every woman that I work with that has, that I've impacted that's my mission and vision for them is I want them to show up as their full selves and be unapologetic about it. Okay. You primarily work with women or is it exclusively? Um, not exclusively. I've worked with men a lot. Um, LGBTQ community is my ideal client as well. But a lot of, of people that I've worked with have been Latinas and have been women of color. And that's usually my, my main thing. I just had a conversation with a a mentor of mine yesterday who I really respect. And, and, and he, he said it himself. He said, Mm -hmm. you know, tapping into the Hispanic 
market mm -hmm. in San Antonio. And, I mean, you grew up in the Valley and everything. Yeah. Uh, I think he even said something to the effect that it's largely untapped right now. Or, or we're just on the kind of the, the tip of the iceberg and everything. We, so. Yeah. And that actually was the start of why I started Hustle and Socialize Conference. Right. Yeah, that was because I kept walking into, and this was, you know, again, early days. This yeah. was 2015, 16, 17. I kept walking into networking events here in San Antonio. Yes. And I was often the only Latina in the room. I like only Latina. And I'm like, where are, we? I know we're here. And when, where when are was we? This? 2016? See, that surprises 17? me. Not even 10 years ago. Not even okay. 10 years ago. And there was one moment where I just got fed up and I was like, I actually wrote it. So I, I have it saved on Facebook. I okay. wrote it on Facebook and I was like, how is it that we're, this was 2017. I was like, how is it that we're in 2017? We live in San Antonio and there are not more people represented in business yeah. community circles. And that was the start of hustle and socialize okay. and how that came about. I feel like there are a lot of networking groups now, or it's better. It's, it's better. Not it's are, not perfect. There are it's better. groups and, yep. and chambers that get together, right. and there's happy hours and right. breakfasts and right. lunches and those kinds of But it's still a who's who town. Okay. So who's who town? I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I yeah. See and, saying. And, and, so you're telling me, in other words, it's largely respectfully it's the same typically the same people right. that show up at all of these events absolutely and i think that's what i really wanted with hustle and socialize i wanted to bring folks that you would not normally see hmm. in these communities that might not get that might be their one opportunity that might be the the place that they you know i this past year we were at the 24th floor of the frost tower just right to just our right, right here to yes. the right yes. and i had um a, a woman who's parents um immigrated and, and came into the united states and you know she's a daca recipient yeah and she told me she's like i never thought that i would have these opportunities to go all the way up yeah of a skyscraper and and have a business mm. and own a business and and so it's i think that's the importance of hustle and socialize and why i got started with that. good for you okay yeah. It is show and tell time. <laughs> I always ask my guests if they'd like to bring an item that is meaningful to them. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I okay. have not seen this. So okay. without so, further ado, what what do we have? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh is my goodness. I received the 2023 Woman Business Owner of the okay. Year Award with Nabo San Antonio. And this is very um, special to me because it took six times, six chances to actually win this. So NABO is the National Association of Women Business, business owners. owners. Okay. And in 2016, the very first year that I completed in business, I actually was nominated. Wow. And I did not move to the next round to, okay. to you know, to win the award in 2017. I was nominated again, and I didn't move to the next round. In 2018, 2019, you yes, see a pattern, right? I do see a pattern. And, you know, there was one year uh, so special to me, it was 2023, because I in 2023, I actually um, bought out my business partner. I brought Hustle & Socialize to the uh, SVG brand. I right. rebranded, and this was the year that I actually won it for my company and Hustle and & Socialize. And so this is a reminder that you may get knocked down multiple times. You may get rejected, which is like my story of, you know, rejection and whatnot, but there is something for you at some point. Okay. And I think for me, this award uh, shows my tenacity, my perseverance, my resiliency, and it also, um, out of everybody that won, you know, I, I was one of the two Latinas who won. And um, both of us who won that were Latina are actually from the Rio Grande Valley. Get you. And so this was super special to me that I keep daily. And I've won other awards, so this is actually I my, know, I know you have. my fourth award that I won. But this one is so, so special to me because it took six yeah. times to win. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's all those TV news executives those, now. Look, yeah, at, look at her now. Look exactly, at her now. Exactly. Yeah. But I would think with what you do now, mm -hmm. um, you can still pick up a microphone occasionally and talk publicly. It might not be in the middle of you know, yeah. red carpet at the Academy Awards, but mm -hmm. you can still 
talk and be yourself. I can. And, I, you know, at some point, I don't have a podcast yet. That's coming okay. in the mix. Of I know I've been yes. a guest on various podcasts. Um, I'm the host of my conference, and so I get on stage all the time. I moderate panels. I'm on panels. I speak. Um, I was on the TEDx stage. And so, yeah, yeah, I mean, even though I'm not physically on the news, there are still different avenues, I think, because of the gift of social media and because of that. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. I, I just tell this all the time. If you'd have told me that this would yeah. be how I'm supporting my family and yeah. get, kind of scratching that itch for public speaking and talking to people mm-hmm. I laughed in your face yeah. two, three years ago, but here we are. Exactly. It's amazing. It is. It, it really is amazing because the news business too has changed a lot. It just, has. Just in the time that you were trying to get in and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I recognize that too. And you know, I still am a friends with a lot of producers sure. and I'm so grateful for that because they, they are, they really are great people. So, again, 10-year ten, ten anniversary ten of the year company, if you will, mm-hmm. on to the second decade now. Uh, and, again, you're still so young and have so many years ahead of you. What mm-hmm. else do you need to check off the list? Oh, my goodness. So, I mean, I've been going national more um, in, in my personal brand. So, not only have I impacted San Antonio and now the state of Texas, but now I'm starting to get opportunities out in California. I'm starting to get opportunities. Um, I was a keynote speaker last year in Oklahoma. And um, one of the the missions with, with Hustle and Socialize, so my conference, we went national this last year. Good for you. And I want to continue to expand it so that people look at San Antonio as a place to come for their business. You know, I we always joke and we kind of say this, like San Antonio's not a sexy city. You know, yeah. there's Austin, there's Dallas, but I feel like there's so much untapped potential here in this town and people are starting to recognize what San Antonio is becoming and I, I want more people from the outside to see what the women here in San Antonio right. are doing. And so I'm continuing to expand nationally. I want to, you know, launch a podcast, write a, a book at some point of like a yes. memoir or just okay. a lessons of, um, for, you know, border girls like me who have come really started from the ground up, you know? Um, and yeah, I, I'm wanting to build a brand kind of like a, I don't know if it's like a media company, but I want to build a brand oh, that has the freedom and flexibility for the things that I love doing. And, and that's just, talking with people, speaking with people, um, coaching women and, and my conference. Like I said, when I grow up, I want to be Christina, <laughs> you know, one of these days, one of these days. It's, it's content creation goals right here. Um, so what do you do for fun when you're not running your empire and oh going to Oklahoma to talk and doing yeah. those kind of things? Okay. So <laughs> my husband and I really love Disney. So we like to go oh. to Disney a lot. We don't have kids yet. Um, world or land. If you I'm, had to... a, I'm a fan of land, California, California, okay. only because Disney world has gotten so crowded. <laughs> It's be huge it's too. Huge. To- I love Disney World. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like there's something so special and unique about Disneyland. Um, and I just, you know, I really love to hang out in our city. You can find me at the Pearl at all times because we live close by. And yeah, um, but I'm I'm really trying to get into like more um, self care stuff, whether it's like painting, pottery, yeah. um, something creative. I've been trying to do that as well. Got to do community theater or something. Exactly, you- and dancing, and you know. Oh, my my parents still live in the valley. Okay. So I go home as often as I can. They're getting older, and so I try my best to just like hang out with them and be good with for them. you. Good yeah. for you. I know Gina here is asking about following you on social media. Yes. So I should mention first of all the website, the Social Butterfly Gal G A L mm-hmm. dot net. Yes. The Social Butterfly Gal dot net. Yeah. Um, you're I know you're on LinkedIn and all of the mm-hmm. platforms. Um, it, it's either either under your name or um, uh, you can find me at the Social Butterfly Gal on. Instagram. Right. That's that's my. I handle. found her pretty easily. Uh, <laughs> she, she's not difficult to find, which <laughs> is would make sense yeah. for your line of work and yeah, everything. Yeah. Um, I guess if we could leave our viewers with one more little nugget of advice, or mm-hmm. as it relates to uh, either the social media, yeah. the, the future of um, marketing, branding. What, what do you think that would be? I mean, I I think we all have a saying in our Hispanic house, households like "echala ganas." Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, Echela ganas has been a saying that my dad and, and dale gas, like in, in the dale valley, gas. Dale gas. Yeah, so stash. both of them, that has been a saying in my family. Um, and si se puede, like we're so over here, right? <laughs> three, three. But those three sayings, I feel, um, are very important. And I think 
entrepreneurship in general. Like if you right. are going to start a business, you need to have done us because this work is not easy. Just, amen to that. It has been, you know, ups and downs and there's moments where you're like, I think I'm done. But then there's moments where you meet people, and I'm pretty sure you've experienced too, where they come up to you, and, and they're strangers, right? And they come up to you and tell you how impactful your work is. And I think to me, Echelanganas is like, I'm going to keep going because yeah. future generations um, are going to get to benefit from the work that I'm doing here. Yeah. And I think that that's just always been the vision and the goal and, and whatnot. And so I think it's like, have that si se puede spirit, like, uh, yeah, just keep going. You are so right about that because San Antonio is a special place and the mm -hmm. people have been so supportive and nice and I it, but it took me leaving the station to realize that because mm. I was always there at right. The, right yeah now I'm forced to come out sit here in downtown San Antonio interact with people and uh, yes people are amazing and so supportive and nice and they've supported pickup lines and everything so it's mm -hmm. such a blessing but yeah. it's never too late to learn and soak it up isn't. more information it isn't which is yeah. what I've just tried to do over the last <laughs> half hour here with Christina yeah but uh, I, I'm just like I told you you're, you're one of these people I've